The one or the other can remember version 7 of the One Identity Manager. And in version 7 of the One Identity Manager, the brand new feature was the synchronization engine. Before and together with the synchronization engine in 7, if there was a synchronization project or a sync running and there was another sync running after or it was necessary to have one sync that was waiting on the other, it was depending on the configuration of the schedules. For example, having Active Directory synchronization first and Exchange synchronization after was a configuration in a way of that the first schedule was starting the Active Directory synchronization and a good timed second schedule later on once the first project stops was just starting then the synchronization for example of Exchange. In version 8.0 first time, it was possible to start the Active Directory synchronization and the Exchange synchronization with the same schedule, but it was configured in a way that first Active Directory starts and after this ends, then the next that was Exchange started as well. In version 8.1 of the Identity Manager, we have now a complete new behavior implemented, which is more or less something like a synchronization sequence plan. That means I can add different synchronizations of different schedules or as well different target systems together in one big plan and I can as well configure if these synchronizations will run sequently, that means one after the other, or in parallel, that means at the same time. For example, I can configure two different target systems which are not connected to each other in a way that the synchronization of these systems are running in parallel. And I can configure then, for example, Active Directory in Exchange and maybe Azure in a row so that one starts after the other ends. With that, a very new feature is implemented and really helpful. And we have now as well a plan how synchronization and in which order synchronization will work. To show you the new stored up sequence behavior we was talking about, just look here in synchronization editor. If I just step to database menu, then I find something that says menu stored sequence. And this is exactly what I like to do. In my system exists two sequences. I, if I just double click the sequence, it gets auto loaded. And what I can see here are all startup configurations of all of my synchronization projects, not too many of them, as you can see. First thing is to get one of these considered. I have just to click on that icon here and then I get it. You see there are four assigned startup configurations and just one which is not part of the story. Second part is that I can just organize the order of my synchronizations. I do that with the help of these arrow buttons here down and up so I can just manage in which order these sequences at the end gets used. A little bit more tricky is uh, to set these checkboxes here. They look like checkboxes, but if I click on them, nothing happen. The way to change these things is just to click here on that configuration icon. Then you will find two checkboxes to check. And if I check one of these boxes, they get auto checked here as well. As you can see, my configuration shows an active directory synchronization followed by an exchange synchronization. And then we have LDAP and SharePoint. And because I checked the box of run simultaneously, these two steps will be then executed simultaneously. The schedule here, you can as well select an existing schedule. I took my Active Directory synchronization schedule, or you can just create a new one to make the whole synchronization sequence available on a scheduled basis. Since years, we do have a script library in the Identity Manager, but unfortunately, this script library cannot be used with the synchronization editor in the synchronization project. Behind that is that the full contact to the Identity Manager world, it's something that was not implemented into the synchronization engine. Reason for that is that the synchronization engine can, and that was the idea of, of this synchronization engine, be used separately, that means disconnected from the Identity Manager. Nevertheless, today there is no project, but this is one of the paradigms of that specific tool. In the couple of the last years and months, we often was using script-based content in the synchronization editor as well. 
things like properties which have to be converted or specific scripts that was for example pulling out passwords out of a privileged account management system like safeguard to get synchronization account passwords are typically script based and these type of scripts gets more and more used in the synchronization engine as well. Because of that it makes sense to store such scripts as well as templates so that in another synchronization project I have not to reinvent the wheel. I have just only to import a specific script from another synchronization project and modify it a bit. This functionality is implemented since 8.1 and this is what I want to show you now. To show you how this script library works, I'm in the synchronization editor, as you can see, and I loaded my Active Directory synchronization project. The example will not be the best example, especially because I don't have too many scripted properties here in my environment, but it should show you how the whole thing works. My first small preview is the script library. If I look into that, you can see the script library is already empty. This is because this is a fresh installed uh, environment and there is no project with any script library stored. To do now something with that, I step into mappings of my active directory project and I load init org person. If I search a little, I will find a property that is VRT user password and double clicking the property, you will see that there is some code behind. That means it is a scripted property. Typically, I need not a template for that script, but in this specific case, I will create one. So I just say move to script library and say yes. And what happens here is that the script itself gets moved to the library and a call to that specific library script is then here inserted. Having now that script just here as a reference, I can close that specific property and close that project. I should better store the complete stuff in the database. And once that is stored, the next step is I can directly jump here into the configuration part of my project. And there is the script library. If I look into the script library, I can hear now a specific script. To use that script in some other places, I have to double click it first and I can here see the checkbox is template. And before I don't check that box, that script, it's just moved into the script library without being used as a template. So I check the box and I stored the whole stuff to the database again. And now we should be able to use that script in another project. Therefore, I close that project right here. I step, for example, to my exchange project, load my exchange project. I think it makes no sense what I'm doing right now, but at the end, I will only want to show you how to use the scripts. Once my synchronization project is already open, the next step is to step here into script library as well. And I have to import first something which is marked as template. As you can see, here is now a, a specific script available. I just import that. I can now modify the script if I like to. Yeah, maybe because, because of the, for example, the, the specific properties and something like that. What I need there is a specific name. As you can see, the function name says it is an active directory. So I should better create an exchange script out of this to make it a little bit easier way level. And then the only thing I have to do is to get that function called. Therefore, I just take the name and I was just moving away the the call from the other script first. So that makes me the whole thing easier. I copy that step, for example, then into my mappings. Here we are. And I decide now that my mailbox user gets a password. You never need that. But on the other hand side, I want to show you how that works. So I just take a script property. I copy in the function call of my specific script. Here we are. I give the whole thing a name and as well a display name and it should be data type string like the most passwords and here we are and I commit the whole thing to the database. Great and with that we have a script and it is used as well to generate a very virtual property here in my other project. You can see that. And the last functionality of the complete process is now to show you how to update these things. We can do that manually. Therefore, I just close that project 
and step back into my Active Directory project. That means into the project where originally the template was created. I just step there into the project library, load my script and try to change that script. So that means I upgrade the script code a little bit. Here we are. Now I can write another line into that, for example. All of these changes not really make sense. We are aware of that, but um, this is what I want to show you. And once this is done, I can then directly step to the other project. And if I open now the other project, and of course I have to store the, or the old project first. And if I open now the other project and step there into the script library, then I can see updates. Here are my updates. And uh, it is now a manual st step just to figure out if I need these updates on the original script. So I can just show these updates first. And as you can see, the then very colored, the changed lines will be displayed so that I'm able to decide if these updates are necessary or if, if I take these updates, then have to be modified. If I think they are good, I can just say apply and you can see now there are the updates in the other script. This is not an automated process. It could not be an automated process, especially because maybe I have to do some decisions first. But as you easily can see, this process is completely implemented and usable. And of course, you will do that to solve many more complex problems as I did here. For my specific use case, I will now delete all of my changes and library entries, especially because I don't want to damage my synchronization projects that way.